presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are, they, are there only a few who will be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and say, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you come from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Someone asks Jesus that critical question that I think we all ask from time to time, who will be saved? Will I be saved? Will my loved ones be saved? And the answer that Jesus gives is strive to enter through the narrow gate. There are two truths that our scriptures present to us today. One is the inexpressible mercy and love of God. That is who God is. God is love. God is mercy. God cannot not love us. That's the fundamental truth. And St. Paul plays that out, teases that out, in especially this section of his letter to the Romans, chapter 8. God is mercy. We can trust in God's mercy. And the other truth that our scriptures look at today is that each one of us are free. We have free will. And there's a balance between those realities of God never forces us to love him. And we are free to choose to love God or not to love God. Jesus, in today's gospel, warns us about simply presuming in God's mercy. It would be like the person who says, well, God is love, God is mercy, everybody's going to heaven, so let's have a good time. What the heck? Or this whole idea of prayers and church and trying to do the right thing. Hey, let's just fit in with the culture. Let's just do what everybody else is doing. Or those dirty so-and-sos, they took advantage of me. I'm going get, to get back at them and give them what they deserve. To enter into those attitudes would be to presume on God's mercy. And Jesus says in the parable, don't do that. Don't take advantage of God's love for you. But the other side of the coin is also true, that if we are striving to enter through that narrow gate, if we're trying to do the right thing, then we can trust 
in God's love and believe in his mercy. There's a famous prayer by the Trappist priest Thomas Merton that I love very much. And a key part of the prayer goes like this. I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I do. What Merton is saying in that prayer is, I think, what St. Paul is expressing in today's first reading in chapter 8. That God makes all things work to the good for those who love him. That we can trust that if we are trying to love God to the best of our ability, even though, of course, we're going to make mistakes, of course, we're going to commit sins. But if in our hearts we're trying to do the right thing, then we can trust that God makes all things work to the good. In other words, God is like a magnet drawing steel shavings. Or God is like a tractor beam drawing us closer to himself. God will bend the circumstances of our lives to draw us closer to himself. For those who sincerely want to love God, who sincerely want to do the right thing, who are not taking advantage of God's mercy or just presuming that, okay, well, that's, that's, that's good enough. God will not be fooled. God looks into the deepest recesses of our hearts and knows us better than we know ourselves. The other wonderfully comforting thing that St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans in today's reading is that the Spirit prays for us with sighs and groans too deep for words. Sometimes we just don't have the words. Grief overwhelms us or we confusion confounds us and we just we just don't know how to pray and what saint paul says is that if we are trying to love god then that spirit of god is within us and that prayer is expressed in in sighs and groans and tears and desires that are too deep for words so don't, don't worry if you don't have the words, but have that desire, that desire in your heart to do what is right. And St. Paul says, trust that the Spirit is going to pray for you. Again, because God doesn't want anyone to be lost. God wants everyone to be saved. That's God's desire for all of us. But we have to want what God wants. We have to cooperate with that grace because God is not going to put a gun to our head and say, love me, love me. God is going to invite us. God is going to draw us. God is going to look into the deeper, the deepest recesses of our hearts and see who we are and what we want. We can trust in that mercy if we believe in that mercy. We can trust in God's love if we're striving to live in that love. A powerful example of that, I think, within our own time, is the life of Cardinal Joseph Bernadine. This November, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Cardinal Bernadine's death into eternal life. Shortly before he died, he wrote this little book. It's a spiritual classic, The Gift of Peace. And in the preface of that book, which he hand wrote just weeks before he died, he wrote, to paraphrase Charles Dickens in A Tale of Two Cities, it has been the best of times, it has been the worst of times. The worst of times, why? Because what he writes about in his book is the false accusation against him that had been, lay, uh, uh, that had been smeared across the, the media that he was guilty of sexual abuse. The worst of times. Also that he was struggling with pancreatic cancer that would eventually take his life, that caused great pain and suffering in his life. 
the best of times because the false accusation against him was dropped, the best of times because he was reconciled with his accuser, the best of times because there was this tremendous outpouring of love for him throughout the entire archdiocese and across the country, and indeed in many ways across the world. The best of times because he conquered his fear of death and came to see death as his friend who would eventually unite him with his Lord and Savior, Jesus. The cardinal goes on and says, God can write straight with crooked lines. Or to put it another way, this book, his reflection, is intended to help us understand that the good and the bad are always present in our human condition. The good and the bad, the light and the shadows, they're always present in human life. But... And this is the key phrase. If we let go, if we place ourselves totally in the hands of the Lord, the good will prevail. Life is filled with lights and life is filled with lights and shadows. The good and the bad are always present. Grace and temptation are always present in our lives. But if we learn to surrender and to place ourselves in God's hands and to trust in God's love and believe in his mercy, then what the cardinal says is what St. Paul talks about is true. God makes all the circumstances of the life of our lives work toward the good, and good will prevail. Good will prevail. Good will win out. That's our hope. That's the spirit praying within us. That there's not this cosmic struggle between good and evil and what is going to, who's going to win? Is evil going to win? Is good going to win? No, we believe in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus has conquered sin and death. And in the end, God is going to be victorious. In the end, for those who are desiring to love God, God's grace will prevail. Let me conclude by just praying that prayer of Thomas Merton, which is a prayer of great consolation, that God makes all things work to the good for those who love him, even in the midst of our confusion. O Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going, I don't see the road ahead of me. I can't know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire to please you. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear. For you are ever with me, And you will never lead me to make my journey alone. Amen. Amen. Amen.